Stat line scouting. This is my series where I sift through the minor league numbers and try to uncover some underrated prospects. If you want to hear all about how Jackson Holiday is tearing up double A, well, it, this probably isn't your video, to be honest. We are jumping in here with the Fangraphs minor league leaderboards. These are the most strikeouts by a pitcher at the double A level, age 20 or younger since 2006. In order, it goes Gio Gonzalez, Chris Tillman, Phil Hughes, and then in 2023 for the White Sox, Christian Mena. Christian Mena is who we're going to kick off this uh, episode talking about. You might look at these pitchers ahead of him and say, is that really all that good? But uh, I would keep in mind, all three of these guys were all-stars at some point in their career. And there's also some other good company here in terms of just getting you that volume at a young age at a really high level of minor league baseball. Here's Kyle Harrison, just had a great debut with the Giants, really uh, you know, hyped pitching prospect. Uh, Mike Soroka, Nick Aiden Hart, that kind of makes me sad. Yuri Perez is on here. Jordan Lyles is on here. Hey, shout out to the uh, Chad Innings Eater. But yes, Christian Mena getting a lot of action at a really young age at the AA level. Not only that, he has just been promoted to AAA, so he is really knocking on the door of the big league rotation for the White Sox next year. I know that says double A, but I do believe he's on his way to triple A. Uh, the double A affiliate for the Chicago White Sox is the Birmingham Barons. And that's sort of important to keep in mind because they play in the Southern League. And the Southern League is experimenting with a pre-tacked ball. Because of this, you're seeing probably higher spin rates and definitely higher strikeout rates as a result. So he struck out, you know, 28% of the batters he faced in double A as a 20-year-old. There is a slight asterisk on that. The numbers here, overall, uh, while solid ratio is not insane, I mean, it added up to a 4.66 ERA for him, but this is all about performance relative to age, and he is just 20 years old. He's on his way to AAA, 6'2", 170 pounds. So, you know, there's a lot to get excited here when it comes to Christian Mena. If a 24-year-old were putting up these numbers in AA, they wouldn't be in this episode. But when you're 20 and you're facing competition that on average is two, three, four years older than you, uh, that is something to celebrate for sure, as he's held his own, and now he's on his way to AAA. I also like to hop on MLB Pipeline, because even though it's not my actual go-to for prospect coverage, it's just good to think, hey, what does the official prospect coverage of the league think about this player at this given time? Looking at the Chicago White Sox top 30 prospects, a prospect list that, by the way, is very different now from where it was a month ago because of the trade deadline. They acquired many of these guys recently. Christian Mena, not new to the system. He slots in at 10th with an ETA of 2024. I also like to look at sort of the biographical information, at least sort of figure out, hey, what's this player's background? Where'd they come from? How did the White Sox acquire him? Looks like he was signed out of the Dominican Republic for $250,000. Uh, as part of Chicago's 2019 international class. So there you go. That's Christian Mena, the first prospect we're going to look at today on Statline Scouting. Next prospect we're taking a look at is Thomas Sejaci. This is an infield prospect originally drafted by the Texas Rangers in 2020, fifth round to be precise, but just traded at this past trade deadline to the St. Louis Cardinals. So this is a St. Louis Cardinals prospect. It was part of the deal that sent Jordan Montgomery to the Texas Rangers, and Sejaci was already doing pretty excellent uh, in double A for the Texas Rangers. He was slashing 313, 379, 512 for a 131 WRC. Plus. However, since making the move to St. Louis's system, he has been even more on fire. The walk rate is way up. He's hitting 363. His OPS is nearly 1,200. His WRC plus is 194. Only 24 games, but he has nine home runs in those 24 games compared to 15 and 93 in the Texas Rangers system. He was not actually considered sort of the, the bell of the ball, the main prize of this deal. That would be Takoa Roby, who was a pitcher acquired by the Cardinals in this deal that sent Jordan Montgomery to the Rangers. However, he is making a case for at least sort of a 1A, 1B type thing with how he's come on so strong ever since joining the Cardinals system. I will also point out that even though his numbers are crazy in St. Louis's system, he was also heating up his final month with the Texas Rangers, his final month with them. He had an OPS over 1,000, so good job by the Cardinals identifying that. They found a player who was getting hot. They traded for him, and ever since then, he's only been hotter. To the Rangers' credit, Jordan Montgomery's been excellent for them and may very well be the difference maker in terms of a playoff berth or not this year. We'll just have to see how that turns out. 
Looking at the St. Louis Cardinals system on MLB Pipeline, so JC comes in ranked number ninth. This is a system headlined by Mason Wynn, who has just made his Major League debut, and Tink Hentz, who I covered on this series last year. Takoa Roby is also there, again, part of the same trade as Thomas Sejaci. Looking at some of his information here, the, uh, even though he was a fifth-round pick by the Rangers, they went over slot on him. They gave him an $800,000 bonus. So, you know, maybe not a true fifth-round talent in that sense. But either way, uh, nice pick by the Rangers and uh, nice trade for both the Cardinals and Rangers so far. Seems like it's been a win-win for both, honestly, with how good Gumby's been. During stat line scouting, we like to move down the rungs of the minor league ladder. We're starting off with some triple A and some double A, and we're going to end on some rookie ball. Right now, we're in high A with 20-year-old catching prospect Christian Serda, the Arizona Diamondbacks. What stood out to me just looking at his stats, first of all, is that he's actually improved upon promotion. So from uh, where he started in A ball, he had a 120 WRC+, plus, gets the promotion, and in high A so far this year, he has a 149 WRC+, plus, six home runs in 31 games compared to five home runs in 68 games for Christian Serda. You look at the profile as well, a lot of walks, a lot of walks, a respectable strikeout rate as well. The way you sort of end up with this uh, profile is he's probably like a low chase, but also low swing guy. So he probably doesn't swing very often, and that gives him a fairly low chase. And when you're playing in the lower levels of the minors, it's pretty easy to walk often if you don't swing often, just because, you know, you're going to run to a lot of pitchers who struggle to throw strikes consistently. What he's going to need is he's going to need power in the zone. He's going to need the ability to punish pitches in the zone in order for this profile to continue to work because he will get to higher level minor league play and major league play and pitchers are going to be able to throw strikes and all of a sudden that passiveness uh, can work against him. Six home runs in 31 games at this level as a 20-year-old uh, gives me hope. Uh, and also the fact that he's a catcher is good. Even if he doesn't you know, fully develop into a great defensive catch or anything like, like that. And I know they have uh, Gabriel Moreno already in there. You know, just uh, the ability to play any sort of catcher really boosts your overall value, uh, especially if you can hit. So Christian Serda is going to be uh, the catching prospect we're looking at here for the Arizona Diamondbacks High A affiliate. Here are the Arizona Diamondbacks top 30 prospects. This is a system highlighted by Jordan Lawler and Drew Jones. Also, Yumin Lin is way up there. He's someone who we covered about a year ago and has been excellent even since. Uh, Christian Serda comes in at number 24, so we're going down the ladder here, getting a little more obscure. Christian Serda, I should point out, Signed originally by the Rays for $325,000 out of the Dominican Republic. So it's not like he was super cheap, super obscure at the time. They were, sh they were still shelling out, you know, six figures for him. But he was traded from the Rays to the Diamondbacks last year in the deal that sent David Peralta to the Rays. And that's uh, appeared to be a pretty good piece of business for the Arizona Diamondbacks so far. Uh, Christian Serda here on Statline Scouting. Is this stat line scouting making you want to go to a game? Well, guess what? SeatGeek has you covered. For example, this weekend, the Reds and the Cubs will face off in a pretty important series with serious wildcard and possibly even division implications. Let's say you want to go to the Sunday game at noon. Well, tickets start from just $11 on SeatGeek. They rate each deal on a scale of 1 to 10 and also provide a photo preview of what your view will look like. So that $11 ticket, that's a 9.5, and you can watch the Reds from here. That's a pretty good vantage point if I don't say so myself. But even better, how about this $17 ticket that's rated a 9.9, .9, amazing deal out of 10. Now you're even closer to the action. That's a great deal for just 17 bucks, and that's a Sunday game. That's not even like a weekday at noon type game. Oh yeah, I should probably mention there's a way to make this even cheaper. So use my code FOOLISH at checkout for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. If you've already used another code like this in the past, just make a new account with a different email and you can use code FOOLISH for $20 off again. I'm assuming a lot of you watching this watched the World Baseball Classic last spring. I'm going to give you a little pop quiz. Does the name Mitch Bratt mean anything to you? Give you a little time to think about it? All right, now I'm going to tell you. He was the starting pitcher for Canada when they played USA in the group. He got absolutely shelled. He recorded one out. He was just 19 at the time. And to his credit, he took that experience against you know some of the best players on the planet. And it looks like he's put that experience to good use in the Texas Rangers minor league system this year. He is now 20, a left-handed pitching prospect. 
2021 fifth rounder, and he's putting up some pretty good numbers. Last year in A-ball, he was good, good ratios all across the board, and he's been able to continue that in high A this year. 14 games, 56 innings pitched, and just good ratios here, 26% strikeout rate and just a 6.5% walk rate, which is pretty impressive at that level for that age. I would say probably, uh, you know, Mitch Bratt, just based on the statistical profile, is giving you the vibes of a young guy with a lot of pitchability. You know, he has good command, good control most likely. And this is a good basis for a pitching prospect because, in my opinion, the stuff is easier to teach and develop than the pitch ability. You know, this is, you know, I don't want to sound like too much of a boomer here, but some guys, you know, they're just better at locating. And if you have a guy like that, the hope is you can develop their stuff and all of a sudden you've got a really great pitching package overall. You know, this is sort of the Shane Bieber or the George Kirby mold almost. I mean, he's walking more guys than that for sure, but that's at least sort of the the best case scenario for a pitcher like that. So uh, Mitch Bratt of the Rangers, uh, good ratios in his uh, age 20, really age 19 season, even though he's uh, 20 now. He turned 20 last month. Uh, but yeah, uh, for high A, Texas Rangers affiliate. We already talked about Thomas Sejaci, a former Rangers prospect. This is about Mitch Bratt, a current Rangers prospect, looking at their minor league system right here. Mitch Bratt is going to slot in at 17th. According to MLB Pipeline, they were overslot on him in that 2021 draft, the fifth round, $850,000. Interestingly enough, although he is Canadian, he finished up uh, his high school career uh, in Georgia, in Statesboro to be precise. So he did play uh, in the United States before he was drafted. And currently he's a hickory crawdad, uh, a good left-handing pitching prospect for the Texas Rangers, Mitch Bratt. Expect him to climb up this list. Uh, as the years follow. Another stat line scouting, another late round draft pick by the Dodgers. This is what they do, people. This is Peyton Martin, a 19-year-old right-handed pitching prospect. He was drafted in the 17th round of the 2022 draft, the 525th player off the board overall by the Los Angeles Dodgers, as if they needed another pitching prospect. Uh, what the thing about uh, Peyton Martin here is Although he was drafted in 2022, he made his professional debut this year. And no rookie ball, no nothing, straight into full season A ball. How has he done? He has done really, really well. And I'm really interested in the ratios here. Although the first thing that may stand out to you is his ERA is 2.04. So he's pitched to a 2 ERA across 14 games, 39 innings pitched. But the ratios here, let's talk about him. 30% strikeout rate. 9% walk rate, that's really good, but when you throw that in with a 57% ground ball rate, I start to get excited, because I really do like ground ball guys, and the thing about being a ground ball guy is a lot of those ground ball guys, I'm going to keep saying it, have kind of a higher walk rate, and so for him to have a walk rate under 10% at his age at that level is good, because the goal of a ground ball guy is essentially to get you to swing at a pitch below the strike zone, thus out of the strike zone, Uh, and then the 30% strikeout rate, That's great, too. So uh, shout-outs to uh, Peyton Martin for the Los Angeles Dodgers, a 17th-round draft pick, 19 years old. I'll happily give MLB Pipeline some credit here, considering this is such a deep system. They have ranked Peyton Martin as 12th, which is actually a lot higher than I thought he would be, considering this is a player in his first pro season and was a 17th-round draft pick. But no, they really like him. A $125,000 signing bonus was interesting reading on his uh, biographical information here. He was used uh, infrequently as a reliever before getting a handful of starts on the mound as a senior. So uh, he's fairly new to full-time pitching, uh, but I think they probably really liked the athleticism, and uh, that's why they took a chance on him, gave him that uh, six-figure signing bonus, and he's done really well in his first season of pro ball in the Dodgers system. Of all the prospects I'm going to talk about in this video, this is the one that has that star potential, that hype, that you know future top 100 prospect pedigree in their future. This is Lazaro Montez, a Cuban outfielder in the Seattle Mariners system who has big, big, big power. You can see how Fangrass has him rated at a 60 raw power with 70 potential. He is listed, because this measurement was taken, I presume, a couple years ago when he signed, at 6'3", 210. Believe me when I say this man is more like 6'7". You know, that's the thing. When you're 17 or 18, you can still grow a lot. So sometimes these measurements are off. 
a left-handed hitting outfield prospect, really probably a DH prospect. And the comp here that immediately sort of jumps to mind for me you know, is the slight possibility that this is Seattle's answer to Jordan Alvarez, a man who has, you know, terrorized them, perhaps most famously in the playoffs. What if they have their own version right here with Lazaro Montez? Because Lazaro Montez, the thing about him is he loves to OPS 1,000. He can't get enough of OPSing 1,000. 1,000 OPS at all levels. He has gotten the promotion to full season A ball out of the complex league this year. And uh, again, that is at the age of just 18 years old. And that's a big promotion. That's a big jump in the level. And what has he done? He's actually hit better overall. He has six home runs in 21 games in full season A ball compared to six home runs in 37 games at the complex level. Uh, doing some more reading about this guy, he has insane exit velocity. So the raw power is is truly there. Uh, you know, he was uh, he's kind of been a high strikeout, high walk guy as well throughout. And I think there are probably some, you know, alarm bells going off in his 2022 season when he was striking out 33% of the time in uh, the Dominican League, which is the, you know, as low as a level as it gets in professional affiliated baseball. Uh, but, you know, I think those concerns have been uh, sort of smoothed out a little bit just based on his performance in full season A ball this year, where he has a 333 average. 437 on base percentage and 632 slugging percentage. I mean, that that looks like a Jordan slash line. You know, like when Jordan's at his best, that's what it looks like. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Lazaro Montez, he's just a teenager. You know, there's there's so much more professional pitching he has to face. But uh, this is a guy with a lot of hype right now, and I just wanted to go ahead and cover him before, you know, he became a little too uh, mainstream, a little too, you know, consensus top 100 prospect so that I wouldn't actually be able to discuss him in a series like this. Looking at the Mariners top prospect rankings, Gabriel Gonzalez and Jonathan Classe, both outfielders, both StatCast scouting alums. And next up is Lazaro Montez, Lazaro Montez. He was, uh, you know, flashing big exit velos as a teenager out of Cuba and as such got a premium $2.5 million signing bonus. That's about as much as you can sign any player for out of the uh, international free agent market. And uh, so far, I would say he is living up to the hype, even if he stumbled a little bit with that strikeout rate in his first professional season. He's looked really good so far this year, and the hype is starting to get big for this young man. Santiago Suarez, a great name with some great alliteration and a great excuse for me to say, hey, this guy was born in the year 2005. I myself was born in the year 1995, so that's not a good thing to read at all. A right-handed pitching prospect for the Tampa Bay Rays, originally, though, signed with the Miami Marlins. So he was traded from the Marlins to the Rays in the trade that sent Xavier Edwards to the Marlins last offseason. Santiago Suarez, here's three things you need to know about him. He hates runs, he hates home runs, and he hates walks. He has thrown about 88 professional innings. In those 88 professional innings, he has surrendered just 17 earned runs, just one home run. He has allowed one home run in his professional career, and also only 14 walks. So you look at these ratios beautiful ratios you know I don't care that the strikeout rate isn't above 30 percent you know he's not a huge 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 strikeout guy but he is a very advanced pitcher advanced pitch ability guy for his age and I like that because he knows walks are for suckers and he knows runs are for suckers and he knows home runs are for suckers and that's why I'm excited about Santiago Suarez who's gotten the promotion to a ball at the end of his age 18 season so he was doing a great job in the complex league in Florida and then he gets the move on to full season A ball to finish off the year. So way to go, Santiago Suarez of the Tampa Bay Rays. Here is the Rays system according to MLB Pipeline. At number 15 is Santiago Suarez. And the good folks at Pipeline do point out, hey, look at the development path Curtis Mead and Junior Caminero have been on ever since, you know, the Rays target them in trades. Maybe Santiago Suarez is next. That would be very exciting. I I'm really uh, intrigued by his statistical profile. It's time for me to give my annual rookie ball disclaimer. These are kids. These are kids. They're so young. Any stats from these leagues have to be taken with a huge grain of salt. Development is not linear. The best 17-year-olds are rarely the best 21-year-olds and are rarely the best 25-year-olds. So that's your rookie ball disclaimer. My hit rate at this level is not very good.
Rafael Ramirez Jr. This is an 18-year-old. It says shortstop right here. Let's just call him an infield prospect because pretty much everyone's a shortstop when they're a teenager. Uh, Rafael Ramirez Jr. with the Cleveland Guardians. He has just wrapped up his season in the Arizona Complex League. And the Arizona Complex League is a step up in competition compared to the Dominican Rookie Ball League. Uh, and as such, you know, this 2022 to 2023 represents a jump up in terms of competition. And he has performed a lot better in 2023 than he did in 2022. And part of that has been just insanely, I would call it comically high, uh, walk rate and strikeout rate really high as well. The reason you see this at these lower levels in the minors is because Rafael Ramirez Jr. is consistently facing pitchers who cannot throw strikes. As such, he's able to remain passive and walk 26% of the time. You know, the worst case scenario is he starts facing pitchers that can throw strikes and he still strikes out 28% of the time or possibly even more. And then all of a sudden he's no good because batting 250 at this level, even though it was his age 17 season, I know he's 18 technically, but this was his age 17 season. You kind of get worried. Well, if he's batting 250 at this level, does that mean he's going to bat 200 or below at the major league level? Because or else you have to go, you know, full Max Muncy or Joey Gallo in order to make that work and get on base at a good enough rate. Because that 26% walk rate, he he's not Barry Bonds, you know. Uh, he is Rafael Ramirez Jr. But yeah, he's uh, this was his age 17 season, and he's playing stateside. So uh, that's uh, makes him one of the youngest players playing stateside. And I think the biggest thing that sort of stood out to me. Uh, you know, besides these uh, ridiculous numbers right here, just the change in the batted ball quality uh, from last year versus this year. You can see the line drive rate has increased a lot from 13% to 20%. The ground ball rate has decreased from 42% to 35%. And although the fly ball rate is the same, it's not really the same because he's halved his uh, rate of infield fly ball. So these are fly balls, you know, pop outs to the second baseman or the catcher or what have you. These are basically always outs, and he has uh, greatly decreased the rate at which he does that. Uh, four home runs in 41 games stateside, Rafael Ramirez Jr. And for the first time in this episode of Statline Scouting, we have done it. We have found a player who does not appear as a top 30 prospect in their own system, according to MLB Pipeline. These rankings aren't always super updated. I'm sure around preseason next year when the new list for 2024 comes out, he will be on there. But until then, Rafael Ramirez, not a top 30 prospect for Cleveland, according to MLB Pipeline. Next up is Rainer Arias, a 17-year-old, born in the year 2006 of our Lord, outfield prospect for the San Francisco Giants. I just want to say up front, this guy is pretty hyped. Like he signed for big money as an international free agent. It's just that not everyone follows the international free agent market. So if you don't, let me be the first person to introduce you to Mr. Rainer Arias of the San Francisco Giants. Has just wrapped up the Dominican Summer League season. Only appeared in 16 games, but in those 16 games, there is absolutely nothing you can complain about. The stats are ridiculous. Four homers and four steals in those 16 games. 414 batting average. That's a weird way of putting it. Sorry. 539 on base. 793 slug. For a OPS over 1,300. Walk rate about 20%. Strikeout rate just 15%. Weighted runs created plus 230. So that's, uh, that's Rainer Arias for you. Let's hop on over to Pipeline to learn a little bit more about this young man. MLB Pipeline has him ranked at number 6th in the San Francisco Giants system with an ETA of 2028. So hopefully that puts some things into perspective. 2028 is a long way away. It also shows that he signed with them for $2.7 million. That's a lot of money. That's close to the max you know, ceiling you can sign an international free agent for under the current structure. And finally, we'll wrap things up with another 17-year-old in the Dominican Summer League. This is Eniel Cortez, a 17-year-old right-handed pitching prospect for the Milwaukee Brewers. What stands out to me, it's what we've seen before with Santiago Suarez and Mitch Bratt. I just really like a high K rate and a low walk rate. And he's managed to do that in his age 17 season, which is very impressive. 27.8% strikeout rate. Okay, that's good. That makes me happy. 2.8% walk rate. Now we're talking, right? Now we're cooking with peanut oil, as I like to say. Uh, 1.58 ERA. Another thing that stands out to me, he pitched a lot. 45 innings at that age, at that level, 
is a lot. And it's also a lot of innings per game, considering he had 11 games, eight of them started, 45 innings. So I think the Brewers really like the workload, and I think they really like his potential as a starting pitcher. Again, he's only 17. On Pipeline, these are the Brewers' top 30 prospects. We are going to scroll down, but I just got to tell you, he's not on there. So this is another fairly obscure prospect we've managed to unearth through the process of stat line scouting. I have another really cool thing about Aniel Cortez to show you right now. So we're here on Baseball America, a great resource for this kind of thing, uh, looking at the January 15th signing class from earlier this year. So Aniel Cortez signed earlier this year made his pro debut with the Brewers. What's cool about Cortez is he's from Nicaragua, which is not the most common uh, country you'll see across uh, Major League Baseball or Minor League Baseball. Nine Nicaraguans signed uh, this past January 15th. Four of them, Milwaukee Brewers. So Milwaukee, they love Nicaragua. They're really active there. So I'm on to you guys. I'm on to you guys, the Milwaukee Brewers. I know what you're doing. Eniel Cortez, just one of four.